Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Modern Warfare 2. I'm going to be sharing all my thoughts about it, good and bad, although we're going to start out with the good and spend most of our time on the bad because I just, I got a lot to complain about on this game. And so we're just going to talk about all of it. We're just, I'm just going to share my thoughts for me personally, for Wheezy, one man's opinion. Let's talk about it. First, an overall summary, and I know if you guys have watched any of my videos, you probably already heard this, but I'm going to reiterate it here. In my opinion, Modern Warfare 2 is just a worse version of Modern Warfare 2019. In my personal opinion, Modern Warfare 2019, the best Call of Duty ever made. I'm going to be doing a video soon after this where I'm going to actually go through and rank my favorite Call of Duties of all time. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, number one on that list is Modern Warfare 2019. And Modern Warfare 2 is a good game. Matter of fact, another spoiler, it's in my top five all-time Call of Duties. That's as far as I'll get into that video. Wait for that. But it just is in every way pretty much worse than Modern Warfare 2019. So, first let's talk about the good things of Modern Warfare 2. And in general, what I'm going to be the way I'm going to be talking about Modern Warfare 2 is in largely in comparison to Modern Warfare 2019, but also just in general as a Call of Duty game. The reason being, if Modern Warfare 2019 in my opinion is the best Call of Duty game, then it sets the benchmark for comparing other games to it. So, that's just kind of how it's going to work. So, good. What's good about Modern Warfare 2? There's lots of weapons in it, right? Modern Warfare 2019 had a lot of weapons. Modern Warfare 2 has a lot of weapons too. A lot of customization, attachments, camos, stickers, decals. There's a whole lot you can do to build out weapons. I recently did a video on building a weapon to look cool versus to be cool. Now, that said, even though there's a lot of customization, a lot of ways to build a weapon, there are only a couple of ways for the most part to really build a weapon. Um, and so, for me specifically, and I think this is tr probably true for most people, the attachments that you go to most of the time won't necessarily be the same as mine, but whatever attachments fit your playstyle best, you will most likely use all the time. In fact, there's like 30 sights or something. It's a lot, a ridiculous number of optics you can use on weapons. I use like one or two because the rest are just like, what's the fucking point, right? Like, so a lot of customization, that's a good thing, right? When we get into bad things, we'll talk about how broken the gunsmith has been. Um, but in general, having a lot of weapons to rank up and unlock and use is good. I like variety in games. Lots of weapons in Modern Warfare 2. Excellent FPS controls. Call of Duty sets the standard for smooth controls in first-person shooter games. I haven't played every first-person shooter in the world, but honestly, I think one of the main components, if not the main component, for why Modern Warfare or why, why Call of Duty is so successful is because they figured out console controls. Keyboard and mouse is a different world altogether because those are all pretty cut and paste, but console controls are huge. You know who figured it out before Call of Duty did? Halo. Halo set the benchmark for controls, which is why it was such a great game. And Call of Duty carries on from that. So, best first-person shooter controls in the entire industry, Halo, Call of Duty. So that's a good thing. Um, there's cool new equipment in Modern Warfare 2. The main one that I'm going to talk about is just the drill charge, because I love the drill charge. I did an entire video about how awesome the drill charge is. That's how cool it is. There were some other things that they added in. There isn't really any equipment that jumps to mind as being like, oh, they shouldn't have added that to the game because it's making the game worse. There's nothing that really stands out as that. There's things that irritate me, you know, like Claymores and Bouncing Betties. Um, but those were in previous games, and honestly, they don't ruin the game. And in fact, they usually add an extra element of tactics and strategy and whatever. So lots of cool equipment. The firing range in Modern Warfare 2. That addition alone is friggin' incredible. The ability to, especially with as many weapons and customizations as they are, the ability to swap out attachments on your weapon and immediately test it and see, is it making the recoil better? Is it making my sprint to fire speed better? I, I think the firing range is one of the best additions to Call of Duty ever. Fantastic. Um, 
And then one other minor thing is they fixed Hardpoint. <laughs> In previous games, I never really enjoyed playing Hardpoint. The main reason being that the skill gap in Hardpoint was always people who memorized the flag rotations on each map. I never cared enough, I never played it enough to do that, and the fact that it seemed like every time I played Hardpoint, the teams I'd be playing against would always be pre-rotating to the next Hardpoint, because they knew where it was and I didn't, just made it no fucking fun. <laughs> they fixed that in Modern Warfare 2. Ten seconds before the old Hardpoint expires, it shows you where the next one's gonna be so everyone gets that opportunity to rotate. Great addition, makes Hardpoint one of my favorite game modes in Modern Warfare 2. Other good things... Maybe... Hydro? <laughs> the Hydro map, I think, is cool. Um, it's a good three-lane map, and then the addition of water adds an interesting element to it for, like, flanking routes. Um, beyond that, the rest of the maps are... Are, are pretty shit. So let's g <laughs> let's jump over to the bad stuff. Um, there are not enough maps in Modern Warfare 2, and most of them suck. Uh, matter of fact, as I think through the the main reason I haven't been playing Modern Warfare 2 much lately, it's the maps. I mean, I've ranked up most of the guns, so the desire to continue playing on shitty maps just to rank up guns is gone. So since I'm done ranking up all of the weapons, um, with the exception of the new secondaries, which I'm not, I'm not gonna play full games to rank up an automatic Desert Eagle and the SMG secondary, which by the way is also stupid and seemingly a little unbalanced right now. Not because it on its own is super dominant, but because as a secondary weapon, having like a 70 round SMG as a secondary weapon, really harkens back to the old days of the original Modern Warfare 2 and the insane secondaries you could have in that. Um, but whatever, that's neither here nor there. Secondary weapons are always secondary to me. I've ranked up all my primary weapons. So what's going to make me want to go back to the game, like in Modern Warfare 2019? Challenges, maybe? Modern Warfare 2019, I'd go back and do camo challenges and stuff on that. Um, but for the most part, it's just because it was fun to play. I enjoyed playing the maps. I enjoyed playing with the guns. It was just fun. Without the carrot to chase of ranking up weapons in Modern Warfare 2, the maps are just not good enough to want to play. There's a couple that I enjoy. Hydro is my favorite Modern Warfare 2 map. Um, I like uh, Border Crossing. Um, that's I know that that's controversial, but honestly, I enjoy it because it has some fun flanking. I did a video on Border Crossing and how to play it effectively and why you should enjoy it. You should probably check that out if you don't like Border Crossing. I'm um, trying to think of Museum, which they recently added back in as a DLC map, even though it was in the beta and whatever. Um, what other maps do I enjoy? I mean, there's the Embassy is a pretty good map. I kind of like that one. Um, the one at the castle, I forget what it's called, uh, the Fortress, whatever, the Fortress map. Uh, is shit, Albagra? Whatever. It's a shit map, it's completely unbalanced to one side. So it's a crap map, but I kind of enjoy playing it because the whole point of that map is you fight for the good side because it's so unbalanced, but it's still a shit map. <laughs> um, and I guess Raceway is okay, except that it randomly has a bunch of noise. But the problem is, when I'm playing Modern Warfare 2, it seems like 50% or more of the time, more than it feels like 50, more than 50% of the time. Most of the time, I feel like I'm playing a map that I don't like. <laughs> and that's not a good place for a game to be. And it feels like there's not a lot of maps, right? It feels like there's not a whole lot to choose from. I don't know the exact numbers, right? But typically in previous Call of Duty games, they launch with, you know, upwards of 14, 15, 16, 6v6 maps. I forget the exact number that Modern Warfare 2 launched with, but it was like maybe 10, 11, something like that. And even with the DLC maps, it's barely to the level where it should have been at launch. Not to mention the fact that all their new maps are fucking hot garbage. So, I, I don't know. I just... Anyway, not enough maps, most of them suck. The time boxed perks are still super frustrating. They make the game feel so inconsistent because the first bit of the game feels like, I don't know, like you, you earn your perks but they're also time box, so you'll eventually get them no matter what, but you can get them a little faster if you play well. 
Which honestly would almost be better if there was just like, you'll get the first one after one minute and you'll get the second one after three minutes, no matter how good you do. Just because at least then it would feel kind of like predictable, but it just feels stupid. I'll start a new match and I'll shoot someone and I'll go to reload and I'm like, why am I reloading so fucking slow? 30 seconds ago I was reloading fast. Oh, I haven't earned that perk yet. Oh, I'm defending an objective. I just killed a guy. My health regen hasn't kicked in. What the fuck? Oh, that's right, because that perk isn't active yet. It's dumb. It doesn't add anything to the game at all. It actively makes it frustrating, makes it feel more inconsistent. The fundamental thing you want from a shooting game to make it fun is consistency, to feel like when you do something, it does what you ask it to. Imagine if sometimes when you pulled the trigger, it just randomly, your gun just wouldn't work. That would be fucking infuriating. Imagine if you selected a perk and sometimes it just doesn't work. That's how it feels. It's awful. They need to just completely undo that. Made, made everything worse. Um, I'm mentioning perk packages here just because it kind of came in the order of I was thinking of things. Although it's not quite to that level of irritating of uh, perks themselves. But it's in the area of perks, right? Perk packages are a decent idea, but they're shitty execution, right? It changes all the classes that you attach to. So you put a bunch of perks together in a package, and then you assign that package to your classes. But then if you change that package, every class that has that package assigned to it gets those different perks. Maybe in someone's mind that sounded like a good idea, but it just makes it stupid in my mind because I used to have a class with perks attached to it. Weapons, perks, equipment. And if I wanted to change that class, I changed that class. Now, I could potentially have a bunch of classes that are using the same perk package, and if I change that perk package, it changes it for every class. And you can't even create as many perk packages as you can have custom classes. You can have five perk packages and ten custom classes. So guaranteed, you will have some reuse of the perk packages across your perks. So the point that it's gotten to for me is essentially, I have my go-to perk package, which I just put on essentially every class except my anti-air kit, which gets its own perk package, because my anti-air perks are different, and a challenge class where it's like, oh, there's a daily challenge where you gotta use a certain perk. I'll just update my challenge perk package so that I can modify that without fucking up all of my other classes. It's so dumb, so dumb, so <laughs> whatever. Um, another thing, <laughs> I'm gonna get into this probably earlier not too, is that jumping is the meta in Modern Warfare 2. And that is fucking dumb. And if you're the kind of person who thinks that that's a good thing or that's okay, I'm gonna explain to you why it's so fucking stupid and why it's irritating and ridiculous. And I've seen people in the community say, oh, you know, crazy movement has always been, no, it hasn't. Go back and watch videos of the original COD 4, of the original Modern Warfare 2, of basically every game up until things started going into the future and having jetpacks and bullshit like that, like Infinite Warfare or whatever, when they added g like nonsense. And then even in Modern Warfare 19, there was a decent amount of jumping, but it wasn't like as systemic as it is now in Modern Warfare 2. It is just everywhere. And it's not just everywhere because it's common. Like back in the days of like COD 4, what was irritating was like drop shotting, right? And that was like irritating. It wasn't as systemic, not everyone did it, but enough people did it that it was irritating. And why is it irritating? Why is jump shotting irritating? Why is um, drop shotting irritating? Why were these, why are these things stupid? <laughs> and why are they bad? Because abusing movement mechanics in games used to be always considered exploitative and the people who did it were douchebags. I'm gonna give you a perfect example if you're old enough and if you're not, you're just gonna have to understand this how it worked. Back in Battlefield 2, way back in the Battlefield 2 days, you had what's called dolphin diving where in Battlefield 2 you could jump and you could go prone. In Battlefield 2, you could do both. You could jump and go prone. It was called dolphin diving where you would be leaping through the air and when you went prone, your guy would like turn into a board, right? So you're jumping like this Right? And then you go prone in midair. So you jump and then you go prone and so your guy's like this. Which makes you like a little line that's hard to hit because you're like, woo, woo, right? Which made you much harder to hit, right? But you looked fucking retarded and everyone hated it because you play a game like Battlefield for the immersion. You want to be pl playing as a soldier in a battle. Call of Duty 
is that. You want to be playing as a soldier in a battle. So seeing elite soldiers leaping around corners, shooting sniper rifles and machine guns with, with good accuracy, or like sliding and machine gunning people, it is completely immersion breaking. So if you want to play like, there used to be games for that. Like Quake, <laughs> right? If you wanted to play a game where it was just you were insane and you moved all over the place, those were arcade shooters. Games that were more immersive, they were trying to be not like Mill Sims, but more realistic, were meant to find that balance between giving yourself the ability to role play in that environment, but also making it fun, right? Like turning it into kind of a recreational activity. Now, when you go so far to one side that you introduce a bunch of uh, exploitable mechanics, and here's what happened, is Call of Duty didn't intend to do this, right? Slide canceling in Modern Warfare 2019 wasn't intentional. People in Warzone figured it out, and then it made its way back into multiplayer. And it was an exploit, right? Typically in previous games, when you would find a movement exploit, the developers would patch it out. If you were doing dolphin, there's a reason that dolphin diving in Battlefield games doesn't exist anymore. They weren't like, well, that's the meta. You just get good, son. If you can't jump and go prone while you're shooting, then you're not good at Battlefield, right? This whole attitude of, well, you're not good at Call of Duty if you don't jump around corners. If you don't, if you don't sprint jump corners, then get good. That's exploiting the game is not a skill-based mechanic, right? Especially when you have, especially on consoles, if you want to consistently do things like jump shotting, you either have to completely remap your controls in a really weird way where you would do something like bumper jumping, like in Halo back in the days, because we used to make fun of people in Call of Duty calling them Halo jumpers, because in Halo the meta was always jumping around, but you're a soldier in space and whatever, that, that was part of that game. When it started to come into Call of Duty, it was like, this isn't Halo, don't fucking do that. Now, jumping is more a part of Call of Duty than it is in Halo Infinite. Which is fucking madness, right? But it's a movement exploit. When people figured it out in Modern Warfare 2019 in Warzone, it was recognized immediately as a movement exploit. It gave people an advantage. They could move faster than the game intended them to. But when the developers talked about or threatened to remove it, people got pissed. Matter of fact, I don't even remember if they did remove it and then they added back in. They obviously removed slide canceling from the new game, right? But overall movement is faster and the ability to jump is and shoot is still a huge part of the game. It is literally the meta and it's ridiculous. The fact that a movement exploit is the meta of the game is a fucking problem. Period. I'll move on. That's all I'm going to say about that right now. But yeah, jumping is stupid, and the fact that it's the meta of the game is ridiculous. Um, the TTK is too fast for the game, um, especially combined with the terrible weapon balance. That said, you can't really properly balance weapons when there's a really fast TTK in a game that is intended to not be a simulation game, right? I recently talked in a video about Insurgency Sandstorm, which has a much faster TTK, right? It is like one bullet can kill you easily. But the game is built around that. Movement is slow or more deliberate. You cannot jump shot in Insurgency, right? You, the, the maps are laid out specifically so that there's a lot of cover, a lot of tactical movement. The audio is set up so that being tactical and moving uh, is important. The objective game modes are set up so that you have to actively be moving. So even though the tendency when you have a fast time to kill and you can get killed easy, easily is to pay, play slower, to be more campy and reserved, the game modes in that game are built around forcing you to move so that you just can't really do that. Call of Duty came from being sort of this arcade style action game, and then they started introducing a faster TTK in some of the games where it, it, it kind of breaks what you're doing. You're supposed to be able to like jump and fly around like a madman, but then there's a faster TTK so you can get like instantly killed, and then it's also an online game, so connections make a huge deal. In a game where like the average TTK is like less than a quarter of a second, like 250 milliseconds or less, which is redonkulous, you are... Modern internet on average is about 60 milliseconds. If you've got a kind of crappy connection, it can be 100 milliseconds. 
Um, if you got a really crappy connection, it can be 200 milliseconds. But let's say like ideal world, you're at 60, 75 milliseconds of a 200 millisecond time to kill. That's like 25% of the entire time to kill that could just be connection. That's kind of wild. That's why games with slower time to kill are um, tend to be more... They feel better. They feel like you have more control over the outcome. Or, like a game like Insurgency, the movement is slowed down enough so that even though there's that fast time to kill, someone can't literally appear in front of you and kill you faster than the game can even render them in there, right? In Insurgency, if someone's going to come around the corner and shoot you, they're going to be moving slow enough that by the time they can see you and shoot you, you will have most likely had the opportunity to see them. So... It's all these really bad kind of game decisions. The best, best, some the best Call of Duty games have been games with slower times to kill. Um, like I said, Modern Warfare 19 had a slower time to kill. You had the option to react if somebody shot you, um, with the exception of the one-hit kill weapons, which have always kind of irritated me, uh, especially when they don't require the appropriate level of skill. Right? It's not headshot only, one-shot kill weapons. It's hit them pretty much anywhere in the body, and it'll be an instant kill. Those have always kind of thrown that off, um, but even then, they have their own drawbacks. Point being, on average, the automatic weapons, the weapons that you play with more often are balanced, SMGs, assault rifles, even shotguns that are instant kill up close, but not so much when you get it at even a short range. Um, having a longer time to kill gives you that reaction time, especially versus connection. Black Ops, the original Black Ops is a great example, which until Modern Warfare 2019 was my favorite Call of Duty of all time had quite a bit slower time to kill and because of that the game felt a lot more like you had an impact on the outcome games like the original modern warfare 2 modern warfare 3 the new modern warfare 2 the time to kill vanguard the time to kill is so fast that it feels like you don't necessarily have a huge impact on the outcome if someone came around the corner and they had a connection advantage you're dead before you could do anything you see it in the kill cams all the time i saw that guy as soon as i saw that guy i started shooting him why did i die you watch the kill cam he comes around the corner puts five shots into you and then he gets hit by your first bullet and you're like that's not what happened on my screen that's fucking horseshit that's what happens when you have a fast time to kill in a modern online game the other part of that is yeah the weapons are unbalanced but you can't really balance weapons properly when your time to kill is less than 200 milliseconds if you change one bullet it can be a 25 percent change to your time to kill if you add 20 milliseconds onto a 200 millisecond time that's a 10 percent change in your total time to kill how do you properly balance weapons when you're like we either have we have to make them all the same because they're all they all have to fit in a quarter second time to kill window it's just it's ridiculous. Um, what else? The game has just been broken since launch in various ways. Um, these are like, like, yeah, you can play the game. Quality of life breaks, not like, okay, the game doesn't work. Breaks, not like, oh, <laughs> Battlefield 2042 is borderline unplayable. Breaks. But, for instance, daily bonus challenges still don't work on most days. It's not 100%, but most days, above 50%, closer to probably 80%, if you complete your three daily challenges and you got those two daily bonus challenges, the vast majority of the time, those won't track at all. I don't know. That seems like a stupid thing to not work. The daily challenges always seem to work, but the bonus challenges, just most of the time, don't. That's been since launch. Um, the Overwatch Helo... If you shoot it down, you don't get any points for it. Every other piece of air support that you shoot down, you get some points for it. Overwatch Helo, since launch, you shoot it down, nothing. It just explodes. Uh, Last Stand, uh, whatever it's called, Survivor. First of all, it's stupid that it's in the game. Second of all, and someone goes into Last Stand and someone else kills them, you get no credit for it. That's a problem they fixed after COD 4, when everyone hated Last Stand, but at least they were like, oh, you should at least get some credit for killing someone. Matter of fact, I think they patched it into COD 4. I think during COD 4's life cycle, they changed it so that you actually got some credit for that. Modern Warfare 2? Nope. And if they're in Last Stand, you don't get any challenges that you're working on. So if you're trying to get long shot kills or headshot kills or whatever, those just literally don't work if the person you're shooting at is using Survivor. It's fucking, it's fucking dumb. It shouldn't be in the game, and it's broken. Uh, footstep audio is still terrible. I remember in the beta it being really good. 
And then they said some shit about, oh, it's not working like we intended. The audio occlusion isn't working right. So we went to this broken version now. And it's still broken. I don't know why footstep audio is still shit, especially three-dimensionally. It's a, I feel like it's maybe a little bit better now than it was, but you can decently tell where people are around you, but the vertical part is broken. And it really irritated me, because today I loaded into Albarn Hatchery, which is a new map that is shit, but it's got a thunderstorm going on. Um, and when I launched into that game, I could hear thunder behind me and up in the sky. I could tell from the audio that the thunder was coming from behind and above me, which means that they have the ability to make audio have some dimensionality to it, but footsteps don't work like that. I will be in a building with a top floor, and it will sound like someone is standing right behind me, sprinting, because they're above me on the floor above, or below me on the floor below, and it sounds like they're right next to me. And I'm like, spinning around. I spin around so often looking for footsteps. It's like, oh, there's a guy right behind me. I turn around, and I'm like, oh, he must be upstairs. Fucking dumb. Fucking dumb. Um, so yeah, that footstep audio is still terrible. Reload canceling. The thing nobody asked for. You want to talk about stupid things. Is this trying to be a mill sim? Why add staged procedural reloads in a game where you're like, oh, we're not trying to be realistic because you can leap around corners with 50 cal sniper rifles, right? And, and slide and all that shit. Oh, but yeah, but if you take the magazine out of your gun and then why, why? Well, that magazine's still not in your gun. Okay, if you're doing a milsim, absolutely. Like, that makes sense. Insurgency, totally. Even a game, like, I don't know. If you're going on the sim route, procedural reloads are a cool thing to have because they add some extra immersion to the game. A game like Call of Duty doesn't, it, it isn't trying to be that, right? So, for 10 years, more than that, what, 15 years? <laughs> Reload canceling, right? Has been a thing in Call of Duty because it's an action -y game, right? You're shooting someone, you go for the reload, someone comes around the corner, boom, boom, reload, cancel, you keep shooting with whatever magazine, whatever ammo's left in your magazine. Until that animation completes, you don't get more ammo. So it wasn't unbalanced, right? It's not like you got a faster reload. It's just, hey, if you're not done reloading, why, why, keep shooting until you run out of ammo. Nobody wanted that to go away, and everybody hates it. It's been in the game since day one, everybody fucking hates it, and it's still there. The time boxed perks, been in the game since day one. Everyone fucking hates it. Why are these things still there? Uh, there's too much fucking smoke everywhere. You throw a grenade, you use a drill charge, someone farts. There's a huge cloud of smoke that stays forever. It's an absolute terrible decision, a pain in the ass. It makes no fucking sense. You know what smoke ought to stick around for a while? Smoke grenades. You know what other smoke ought to stick around for a while? Literally fucking nothing else. I can't believe that these things had to be said out loud. Uh, flashbangs are still insane, right? They, the flashbangs are absolutely the meta because what the fuck else would you use? Stuns do almost nothing now. I used to use stuns all the time just because stun checks were the way I would check and see if people were around corners. Now I do flash checks. Because stuns do nothing, and flashes make people blind for, like, literally six seconds. And even if you're using Battle Hardened, it still makes you completely blind for upwards of a second. Like, in a game with a sub-200 millisecond time to kill, you're blinded for five to six to seven time to kill cycles, even when you're using a perk specifically to protect you from that. It's fucking dumb. So flashbangs effect needs to be reduced. The battle hardened perk needs to actually fucking work. I mean, it does. It reduces the time you're blind, but it needs to make it so you don't go completely blind. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? Anyway, all of these things and probably others that I haven't thought of are broken, essentially, in the game. Just fucking don't work the way they ought to. Um, the broken UIs. Several of these things have been kind of fixed over time, or have been newly broken, right? But like, uh, the perks in the kill cam that show up at the bottom, they've never worked. It's supposed to show the box of what perks they had. All the, There's a lot of times when I see someone come around a corner and shoot me, I'm like, I was watching the UAV, there was a UAV up. They weren't on it, did they have ghost? I don't know, because whatever shows up in that kill cam isn't accurate. Or maybe sometimes it is, no, it can't be accurate, because you'll be at the end of a game, and it'll show that, no, that someone doesn't have their ultimate perk. So, or it's the wrong perk, it just doesn't fucking work. 
it's on every fucking kill cam in the game since launch, and it's never fucking worked. Um, gunsmith and weapon trees were broken for, like, forever. I'm not even entirely certain if they're still somewhat broken, because, like, navigating the weapon platform unlock trees, the way that it was staggered, never really worked right. I think they made it better at one point. They may have broken it again. I've ranked up all the weapons, so I don't ever look at those things anymore. So I don't even know if they're completely working. I know that they got better, but it didn't seem like they were completely fixed. But that's basic UI. You can't navigate the weapon unlock tree. Like, who the fuck is writing this shit? Um, what else? Uh, class selection screens have been awful until recently, and even then it's not very good, right? So it was like, they switched it to where they're like all ten are lined up across the bottom. Which means if you, and you could only see like four or five at a time. So if you wanted to see the other ones, you have to scroll all the way across to it. That was literally in the game until just literally a few weeks ago. So months and months and months. And everyone knew that was stupid. And now they have two rows. So you don't have to scroll. But it's still dumb. They used to be on the left side. You could see all of them. You would cycle through them down that list. And you would see the contents of it pop up on the right. List on the left. It was perfect. It worked perfectly. Why the fuck did they change it to something worse than stupid? And then they decided, oh yeah, it is stupid, we'll fix it. And they fixed it by putting it to something else that isn't the thing that was good. They're like, oh, we'll just add a second row. Because what? Because you set the viewport to show at the top of the screen, and you're like, oh, we don't want to use that up, so we'll have two rows at the bottom, because we switched it to the left. You won't see as much of the class on this. Fuck you. First, it worked fine in Mono for 2019. It was perfect, and you fucked it up for no reason. Stupid UIs. Um... So, yeah, I mean, broken UI, the, the, the most basic thing you can do in any game is the fucking UI, right? It's just menus. It's not 3D rendered bullshit. It's just words that you have to be able to move between. So stupid. Uh, game updates oftentimes make the game worse. In the most recent update, they added an extra strep, step to reach the map screen for the battle pass. You used to click on Battle Pass, go to the Battle Pass tab, and it would pop up the map, and you could navigate and select. Adding the map to the Battle Pass was cool, because instead of just having this list of things that you got in this specific order, you got to navigate your way through it and choose what you wanted. That was a great update to the Battle Pass system, which is one of the things that's horrible being added to Call of Duty. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. But if you're going to have a Battle Pass, that's a cool way to do it. Then in the most recent update, they're like, oh, we added in that default path that you used to have to do. But now it's just a default option, and you can push a button to go to the map and then do it the old way. But by default, we're going to take you to the old shitty view that is clearly inferior. And so now it can just walk you through the default path if you want it to. And the irritating thing with that is whatever it chooses the next one, it just stays up there, right? So whatever step four or five I'm on right now, like I'm elsewhere on the maps unlocking shit because I don't want what's there. But every time I go to the Battle Pass screen, it shows me that thing that I haven't finished out and then I have to push a button to go to the map and find... Fucking dumb. They made it worse. Um, what else? Uh, they added a big red name to the screen for who you kill. You know what they took away from previous games? You used to, in Modern Warfare 2019, you'd kill someone and it would show your kill streak at the bottom. you kill the second person, second kill. You'd kill another person, third kill. That was cool. It made it easy for me when I'm keep keeping track of my kill streaks or like deciding what clips to capture. Oh, how many kills did I get? Fifth kill, sixth kill, seventh kill. Cool. They took that away. That has never been in Modern Warfare 2. I think I think someone said it was in the beta. It may have been, I don't remember. I think someone said it was in the beta, but they took it out for full release. It never came back. But in the most recent update, they changed it so now on the screen where that used to be, now there's a bright red box that shows who you just killed, their name. Who fucking cares? I don't need a big, bright red box on the screen showing me the name of the person I just killed. Why did they put effort into that, but not so many of these other broken things? That's a shitty addition. They went out of their way to make the UI worse. Anyway, um, they, one of the biggest issues in Call of Duty forever is you'll be aiming at an enemy and a friendly will be standing behind them on the other side of the map. And you'll see a blue dot over an enemy's head, and you'll be like, that's a friendly, and you won't shoot, and they'll kill you. It's been a problem in Call of Duty for ages, right? In this, this, during this game, during Modern Warfare 2, they put in a fix where they said, hey, now, if there's a friendly dot behind an enemy, when the enemy moves in front of them, that friendly dot will disappear. 
they patched that in and it worked for like one fucking update the very next update they put in broke it again and it's still fucking broken what the, how fucking bad are you at software that you put in a fix like this advertise it put out videos showing how effective it is it immediately breaks and you don't fix it <sighs> so dumb uh what else um oh apparently i just found this out today they apparently literally broke the ability to mute people like all the time you'll have people with like an open mic they're sitting in front of a goddamn washing machine or they're their cousin is masturbating next to them or they've got the TV on or they listen to fucking rap music and it's just blasting through their headset during the game, you would bring up the scoreboard, you would hit A on their name, and it would mute them. I ran into three games today where there were people on open mics doing shit like that. I couldn't fucking mute them. The button was still there. I could go to the menu, select their name, hit A to mute them. It just didn't fucking do anything. But you know what they did do to that menu is now my name shows up on the scoreboard in orange. So I can really quickly see where my name is on the scoreboard, which nobody, I didn't need. There's, there's six people on each team. I can find my name, okay? But I, I do need to be able to mute somebody. Now that's broken. I can see my name in orange, but now that's broken. What the fuck? So, yeah, they they make the game worse when they're fixing it. Uh, missing features. I talked about the kill streak displaying on the screen. Modern Warfare 2019, it's gone now. Um, in Modern Warfare 2019, the daily challenges. When you were in-game, if you went to the pause menu, it would show the daily challenges and your progress in there. It doesn't do that anymore. Now, if you complete a daily challenge, it'll pop up, and you'll get... There's got the notifications menu, and if you go into that notifications menu... It'll show that you completed one of the daily challenges. But you can't see the progress in-game like you could in Modern Warfare 2019. They took it out. And it's not there. Uh, previewing executions. Especially in a game where you can pay money to buy execution animations. You used to be able to click a button and it would show you what the execution looked like. Now it's just got that little icon that just shows a freeze frame of what your execution is and you cannot preview it you have to equip it go into a game and actually use it to see what the fuck it is how did they add the firing range and remove being able to view your execution animations uh custom loadouts were also added late again Right? The ability to save a custom loadout was not in the game at launch, and it took them what seemed like forever to add it. So long, so so long, in fact, that as I'm going back through some of my weapons I used early on, some of the assault rifles and SMGs I used early on, I don't have custom setups for them because the save a class didn't exist when I used those weapons. I ranked them all the way up and moved on, and when I go back and I'm like, where's my custom class for this? I didn't fucking have one saved because I wasn't able to do that when the game launched. In a game where they added platforms and the ability to have a bunch of weapons and a bunch of attachments, and even weapon tuning, the ability to tune individual attachments, and you didn't have the ability to save those setups at launch? Fucking Cold War did that shit too. Who the... It's so dumb. Just missing features. Stuff like this. Probably, again, other things that I missed. Games as a service model has made Call of Duty so much worse. Having Battle Pass content on its own isn't fundamentally a bad thing. Having things to unlock and having things to rank through beyond just an arbitrary number of levels is nice. I mean, when Call of Duty added prestiges, for some people, they really liked that. Like, COD 4 had prestiges that gave you nothing other than a new emblem but some people really loved it modern warfare 2 and subsequent call of duty games gave you like additional little bonuses like some i think you used to get tokens and you could get like extra cut creative classes and you could get different you could get faster weapon unlocks or you could unlock a certain weapon permanently so like your prestige everything resets but you can like save one weapon so they've had different kind of like mechanisms in the game before it was live service that motivated you beyond just your arbitrary rank number to continue playing but now that there's the battle pass thing where whatever it is 80 or 90 percent of that battle pass is paid content and only some of it is something that everyone gets they've put 
so much more effort into that that it's taken a lot of development effort away from the actual game, right? Instead of the core game getting balance fixes and updates, most of the dev work is being put into skin packs, paid cosmetics, and things that are oftentimes targeted at Warzone players, which is a free-to-play component of the game, and so much development effort is going into the free part of the game that those of us who paid 70 fucking dollars for this game are no longer getting that support that we used to when it was the only core component of the game. So the people who didn't pay for the game are getting the support. The people who did pay for the game, ha <laughs> fucking joke's on us. Good luck getting one map a season that's probably a remake from an old game. Oh, and it's shit. Like, that has just actively made the support of a game worse. We used to get map packs where you would pay 15 bucks or something like that and you would get like three new maps. Now, that did segment the community, so people who didn't buy the map packs couldn't play in those maps, and that kind of sucked. So going to the model where everyone gets the new maps, and everyone can play them, is better, but reducing the number of extra maps we get, or the number of maps the game launches with, and then rolling that into the seasonal content, and then trying to like drip it back to us, when it should have been there from day one, instead of having... 10 maps that you slowly give us one a season until we get up to 15 or 16. We used to get 16 at launch and then we used to get three maps per pack. Okay, whatever. Fuck us, right? Um, <laughs> and also, why when I launch Modern Warfare 2 do I have to, in that menu, then select Modern Warfare 2? They added this fucking like Netflix UI to a Call of Duty game, which is already inside of my... Netflix UI on my Xbox or my PlayStation, I've already selected Modern Warfare 2. Now it launches into the Call of Duty menu, where, I, okay, you're, you've launched Modern Warfare 2. Would you like to play Modern Warfare 2, or Warzone, or Call of Duty 2019, or Vanguard? And if you, like, select Call of Duty, if I launch Modern Warfare 2, and select Modern Warfare 2019, then it closes Modern Warfare 2, opens my Modern Warfare 2019, and then reloads that menu, which takes me to the menu where it says, oh, do you want to play Modern Warfare 2, or Warzone, or Modern Warfare 2019? Why the fuck, after I've launched my game, do I have to select the game that I am playing to play so that I can play the game I want to play when I'm playing the game I want to play? <laughs> um, also, what the fuck happened to Weapon Vaults? We pre-ordered, oh, I pre-ordered the game, and you got the Cinder, FJX Cinder Weapon Vault. The first ever Call of Duty Weapon Vault. Every single weapon for this platform, right? For the FJX platform. So the M4 platform, which was like the FTAC recon, all of the platform, all of the weapons in that platform, every attachment for that weapon had this custom skin that, that matched. They all fit together. Like, so you, you get this, we you get this weapon vault and all of the attachments for all the plat, all of the different variations of every attachment in that platform gets its own custom skin. <gasps> They didn't do another one. At all. Complete. That was it. The first ever weapon vault. No more. There was never, there's never another one. Now it's just skin packs. You get one skin for this one gun. Pay money. Pay $20. And we'll give you a skin for an SMG that you don't like. And a skin for a pistol. And a calling card. And an execution that you can't preview. Okay. 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 The web and the weapon platforms, since we're talking about it, make literally no difference, and they made Gunsmith actively worse for the reasons I talked about it before, because they couldn't make the UIs fucking work. The whole idea was like, oh, you've got weapon platforms now. So you've got these attachments and you can swap out the receiver, right? And so say you've got an assault rifle, you swap it out for an SMG receiver with the same attachments right? Except the game launched without the ability to save classes, so that didn't save you any fucking work, because you couldn't save a class anyway, so what's the point of switching out the fucking receiver on your weapon to keep the same attachments when you couldn't even fucking reuse it? And made the UIs broken and hard to follow. Does anyone swap out a receiver on their weapon? I'm not even sure if you can do it anymore. Maybe you can still. Does I've never fucking done it. If I want to use an SMG instead of assault rifle, I switch to that different weapon, because especially if I have a class saved for it, it's saved for the SMG, not the AR. So the fact that it's the receiver for that platform doesn't fucking matter. It's a different gun with a different custom class. 
Why did they put effort into that? It's dumb. Was it so that those platforms could have those weapon vaults that applied to every weapon in that platform? Oh wait, they didn't do any more of those. Why am I getting increasingly upset with this? Um, the last thing that I'm going to touch on. Ledge hanging. I should have talked about this when I talked about sprint jumping and shit like that. Another thing that they added to the game that actively makes the game worse. Because now, instead of having a reliable... Well, it's never really been a super reliable vault mechanic because they made you have retard jumps, right? So you could jump up to a certain wall and grab it. But if it's your second jump, like say it doesn't grab the first time... You got to jump the second time, but there's a cooldown on how high you can jump. So the second time you jump, you don't jump as high. So you may not jump high enough to grab that ledge. So it's never really been something you could rely on anyway. So you always kind of like jumped and mashed the button to make sure you jumped up anyway. But at least when you caught that ledge, you knew you were going all the way up. Now, if you catch a ledge, you're going into hang animation. And then you have to tap the button again to make sure it goes up into full vault animation. But you can't really be sure that you timed it right. So if I jump and it grasped and I hit A too quickly before you actually grabbed and hung, then it wouldn't process that button to go full vault. So I'd still just be hanging there like a moron. So basically now, whenever I want to full vault onto something, I just mash the button like seven or eight times because I never want to fucking hang. I've gotten maybe three kills ever from hanging and I had to deliberately go out of my way to do that for shits and giggles. It was never the better option, right? And but but the downside is I have to every fucking time I vault now, I have to mash the button eight times to make sure I don't get caught in that fucking hang animation. And I've gotten killed quite a few times because I'm behind a wall and I can hang on the wall, but there's an obstruction so I can't actually vault up. So it'll do this thing where you like are hanging and you try to vault up and you can't vault up, so you kinda like jump over to the side and then rehang and try to vault up, but you're still blocked and you jump over the side. I have been killed more times because of that mechanic then I've gotten kills with it. That is a bad addition to your game. The end. <laughs> Same thing with removing reload canceling. I still, to this day, get killed at least two or three times a session by not being able to reload cancel. And after all of that, Modern Warfare 2 is in the top five of best Call of Duties of all time, and that tells you everything you need to know about how shit the Call of Duty series has been. As a rule, there have been great exceptions. Call of Duty 4 burst onto the scene, really put COD on the map. Modern Warfare 2 was a good follow-up, but it was an absolute shit show, and we'll talk about that more in my follow-up video where I talk about top five CODs of all time. But it's been riding its reputation despite a series of really shit games. You'll see when I do my top five that the best games in the series have been scattered throughout the better parts of two decades. And it's just been such a mess for so long that all of the shit that I just spent 45 plus minutes ranting about, this is still one of the best Call of Duty games ever made. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right, minions. I'm going to stop ranting now. Let me know you guys' thoughts on anything that I said here. You agree, disagree, this is the best Call of Duty ever. What would you fix? Whatever. I mean, what's your favorite Call of Duty of all time? You can save that for my next Call of Duty video or whatever, or this one. But yeah, if you guys watch this video all the way to the end and watch me rant and rave the entire time, you probably liked the video, so you guys can leave me a like. If you got all the way to the end here and you're just like, this guy is fucking dumb and he talks too much you can leave me a dislike it's okay it doesn't hurt my feelings <laughs> if you're new here and you want to see me shoot things fly planes rant scream cry sometimes i play children's games <laughs> subscribe to become a minion otherwise i'll see you guys in the next